Now this is part two of our little video presentation of making this RD seed cowl as I try to get everything lined up here. Now in part one we made the pattern for the bottom and the side and we're going to take it up to the point of doing a fiberglass hopefully in this part. In the previous part one which ought to be on YouTube already by the time you see this I made the bottom it mimics the bottom of the seat. I made the top, the side pieces, which are just a little bit oversized to what we really want since we're going to sand and radius everything in. I try to make a unique shape, something that wouldn't be an exact copy of a Don Vesco seat or a Big Butt seat or an AirTech seat. I've got all my plywood scraps out. Now I've got to take, once I make the balsa wood pattern, I want to make that part out of plywood. 30 second plywood is, of course, is the material of choice here. So I have a pattern that I've made out of balsa wood that I'm satisfied with the shape. Now I need to trace two of them onto plywood. Cut them out with my jigsaw. Relatively straightforward modeling job. In fact, this isn't a whole lot different in building a model plane. In fact, we even use the same material. Now the advantage of making it out of plywood here instead of balsa wood is it'll be a little bit stronger and it, it'll take the fiberglass a lot easier. In other words, that'll, that'll maintain a nice flat shape that'll need very little sanding and filling after it's fiberglassed. And of course, since we've done similar projects for many, many times, I know what the little pitfalls are. And one of the pitfalls, I used to make these out of foam, which I did for Luciano. And by making them out of foam, it, the finishing just requires a lot of extra work. The balsa wood ones, a lot less work. So pretty much from this point on, it's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. Tack gluing the pieces in with CA making sure everything is at 90 degrees. I need to make the top piece, which has to mimic the top piece of the seat. And again, I've made it a little bit oversized since I want it to have that look of the big butt seat. It's kind of square right behind the rider. I could really like the way that looked on Luciano's seat. Again, what he did is he bought one from AirTech but we're going we're gonna to hopefully have something really unique here when we're done. And a lot of times when you look at how these things evolve, and I'm just truing up everything here, you, you're not sure every step of the way how they're going to come out, but if you could see how the part looks when it's done and do it backwards, well, yeah, that'd even be fun. But anyway, making these parts relatively straightforward, And I always try to make the part just a little bit bigger than necessary, and then I try to sand in all the curves. We're going to leave this attached to the plywood and then take out the side pieces, which will be a nice reinforcement that the bottom doesn't lose its curve. So I really put them on, when I put these on permanently, I put them on with, with plenty of CA. And again, the reason for using Brodac CA, I know it's fresh. When I bought CA in hobby shops, sometimes it's not fresh. Sometimes it's been sitting on a shelf. Nothing sits on a shelf at Brodax too long. So. so we're getting this part pretty much ready to install. This is the top. So I have the top mimicked out. I have the bottom, the sides, and now it's a question of putting the jigsaw puzzle together. And that is the top is the bottom and I just need to get the sides. It's always a good idea and when I ran these seams, since I know these pieces are going to stay, this is going to help maintain that curvature as well as the fact of course there'll be a seat in here. So I really ran a real generous bead of CA in there. And then once I flip it over I can hit the glue joint from the bottom also. And little by little this now starts to shape up looking like what I had envisioned. 
I wanted, my goal was to have about an inch behind the rider. Now that, what's nice about that is when, when the bike wheelies on a power wheelie or on whatever, if you just lean in back, it kind of supports you a little bit there. Even though it's not, not like a real racing seat, this would be further back, but you'd be sitting more in an upright position. This does, I had this on my Suzuki the same way, and it was very comforting knowing when you accelerate, you'd hit that and you know, oh, okay, you're not gonna, you're definitely not going up over that hump, that's for sure. Especially with a butt as big as mine. So anyway, this was the goal that the seat would at some point slide right in there, knowing that I have to get rid of some of this foam to get the look that I want, but I don't have to do that right now. I wanted to get in this step, I wanted to hopefully in this day get up to the point where I could put the fiberglass on. And what happened, I had Larry here, Larry was working on one of his projects for the Ducati, and I wanted to show him how how a part like this got fiberglass. So I basically put this together, made some doublers so that I could radius that corner even more. These just double up and go in the corners so that the reason is now I could radius that off. It won't be just flat sides. So from this view, you can see what that, that is going to allow me to radius all those parts off. And because it's balsa wood, it'll be very easy to sand. I always put everything together with tape first, just to see, be, and then tack everything together, make sure everything fits, make sure I can slide the seat in there, make sure all of these things are at 90 degrees. And just get out a triangle and look up and down make sure my center stayed in the center and basically it's just model airplane technology from this point on there's, there's really nothing a whole lot different making the back pieces I made them out of a thick enough piece because what's going to have to happen eventually I'm going to have to f somehow make a piece of carbon fiber for the back of this that holds the tail light and the license plate but again, that's a whole separate project. Right now, we're just concerned with the cowl part. And the way this worked, it had a beautiful curvature in it from the Les Demet trick with the ship curve. That is really a great modeling trick, too. I have never forgotten it. Anyway, I got all these corners cleaned up because I wanted to put the back piece in. I originally thought of doing it with one inch wood, that was my gut feeling, and then I could put some other fancier radiuses on, and I said, hmm, that may be just overkill. And when I got done cutting all these pieces up, I realized, well, you know what, I don't need, I don't need something that thick, I can just use 3 8 So I pretty much put them on the back burner, get out, re reproduce the parts on 3 8 tacked them in, they all got tacked in pretty pretty evenly. Right here you can see the part is held together with tape just being tacked together while I fit up some of the other parts. I'm looking from the inside out so I can glue the joints from the inside and by making it this way I can glue the joints on the inside and the outside both. It's very convenient. CA of course a very convenient way to work with this material just a question of cutting part after part after part after part until they all fit. Anybody's ever built a model airplane, this is a piece of cake. You can you can fall asleep doing this. Now the one thing that was tricky, a little tricky anyway, was where it's going to meet up with the seat in the front. And again this piece I glued in and then just trimmed it off. You can see where I picked up the angle for this piece, so I had a doubler there. There'd be plenty of wood in the corners for making a nice radius. Made getting that part in very nice and easy. Again, balsa wood is a real nice, friendly, easy material to work with. I actually like this a lot better than cutting foam plugs because sand and foam, at the end of a, sand, a foam sand out, the stuff is in the neighbor's yard and my yard, it's on me, it's in my underwear. It's it's messed. This I can clean up with a shop vac in a matter of two minutes.
and the worst happened I got a table full of wood chips I just run a shop vac over that and it's done so I have my basic I call it the basic shape here it's all square on the corners they're all gonna get radiused off of course and not a big job and this this is a couple hours of sanding I condensed down to about two minutes radius and up all the corners I've got the big sanding block small sanding block soft block hard block sander and I can just sit out there and sand away and sand away and this this, this is enjoyable to me eventually I was sanding and I had to get a couple of the edges real nice and I thought this would be nice I dragged this out Larry helped me and this this really made the edges nice and true nice and straight and by doing it outside the wind just blows it away now here's another trick as your radius and edges off just keep hitting it with thin CA and it, it hardens up the edge that you can maintain a plywood to balsa edge with a nice radius very easy to do that so now before I do anything I'm gonna harden up anything that has a radius and sand it down harden it again sand it down so all my edges are gonna have CA hardening them up now Larry and I ran the AutoZone because I realized I didn't have enough fiberglass I needed I needed to get four packs of fiberglass took out the the gallon of West Systems resin I wanted to show Larry what would be the appropriate way to uh, to go about fiberglass and something pretty easy gave gave him a little dissertation on fiberglass and which we've done that on video many many times no different than fiberglass on a, a cowl for a model plane except of course it's heavier fiberglass and always West Systems resin could be done with polyester resin but then the whole house would stink this has to sit up by a heating vent overnight once it sits up by a heating vent overnight that'll be ready and here it is underneath a heating vent that'll be ready for uh, no, tomorrow to be sanded out and do some final fitting and so two days into this project I've got a part that's fiberglass and in one piece and ready for a major sand out the next day we get to work on it now it'll be picked up on part three.